Hello, I'm Sam from Sound on Sound magazine. I'm at Superbooth in Berlin. I'm uh, in the Korg Berlin wagon in the grounds of Superbooth, and I'm with very pleased to be joined by Tatsuo Takahashi, who is uh, the designer behind a lot of the most successful Korg synths in recent years. Um, but you're showing something that's really a bit of a departure this year, which is a prototype of something you're calling an acoustic synthesizer. Yeah. I'm hoping you're going to explain to me what an acoustic synthesizer is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're really excited about this. Um, it's been, so we're here in the Korg Berlin uh, booth. Uh, Korg Berlin is just roughly like two and a half years old now uh, since we founded it. And uh, we've been hard at work and kind of been quite secretive about it. We're super excited because this is like the first super booth that we're showing. Like this is the first public showing we've done um, technical or otherwise uh, to the public. So. Um, this is, uh, this is when people get to know about it. So um, what we are showing is uh, what we call acoustic synthesis. And it basically means that we have an acoustic system that generates its sound. It has its acoustic tonal uh, properties. And we can uh, enhance it or kind of you know, persuade it to do certain things that you would expect in a conventional synthesizer. So the acoustic part of it is uh, these metal resonators. And they these have a particular uh, geometry and material properties that give it uh, its uh, tonal character. You can't hear it right now. But if you imagine uh, maybe a, a, a ruler on the end of a desk and you, and you pluck it, it has this bobbing up and down kind of, you know, it's, it's resonant fundamental frequency. Can we see this on camera? Like, so we have some like explainers to, to, uh, for you to visualize uh, how these resonators move. So this is the fundamental frequency that you expect from a ruler. And the fundamental is the lowest one. This one is a C2, I think, 65.4 hertz. But on top of that, there's lots of other complex things happening at the same time. So this is actually the first overtone, which is 173 hertz. And you can see that it's moving in a very different way. The two arms are bobbing up and down uh, in antiphase. And then we have more. So this is the second overtone. It's more like a, like a snaky wave traveling down its length. And the third one is more bending, twisting, contorting, and there's more. Um, but basically, this illustrates what's not apparent to the eye when the resonator is moving. Um, and it shows how physically it creates all those different frequencies and overtones that give it its sound character. So what we do, um, again, this is probably too small to see. When we move it, right, we need to hit it somehow. So like the hammer in a piano, uh, we have to hit this resonator. And in our case, we don't have a hammer. We have this electromagnetic system, which is called a balanced armature, and which is using like earphones and hearing aids. And basically, we hit it. And then we have to listen to what it does. And the way we listen to it is we use these capacitive pickups bit like in a condenser microphone. Um, and these are held at 50 volts and held close physically to the resonators. And when the resonators move up and down, they change the voltage on the plates very slightly. It's actually exactly like a condenser microphone, except our diaphragm is the resonator itself. Um, and by adjusting the geometry of these plates, we can pick up and target uh, specific frequencies because as we just saw, all different frequencies have different shapes. And so we have basically a 2D map of what we want to pick up uh, designed into these pickups. So, so now that we have the, the signal um, or the movement of the resonator converted into a signal, uh, here comes the, the synthesis part of it. So we feed the signal that's picked up from the movement of the resonator, picked up by the capacitive pickups, and we put it into a feedback control system. And in this control system, we can independently uh, control each mode. And in this prototype, we can control five modes, so the fundamental and four overtones above it. And what we can do with these is we hit it once, and then we listen to the, the frequencies that are happening in this acoustic system, and we give it just the right uh, energy injection, for example, to sustain uh, the modes, or uh, we can inject it in antiphase to even kill these modes as well. So 
what we have in this system is we have um, independent access to all the different modes and we have synth-like control over them. Right? So we can do uh, LFO modulation to, to separate modes. We can have different EGs on the modes. And that's where it becomes a synthesizer as well as being a, an acoustic system. Wow. So it, in a sense, it has something in common with an electromechanical piano, like a, like a Rhodes piano, except that you have this feedback mechanism for exactly, stimulating yeah. the, the times. Or yeah. I mean, we'll see in a moment. I mean, it's got this open loop version. So most, most kind of you know, we'll call it electric instruments are open loop. So the, the electric guitar is you, you plug a string and it has its acoustic system and we turn it into an electrical signal, right? So f same with the Fender Rose, it's like you have your mechanical, you have your tie and you have all the, all the resonant parts inside mechanical and then you have the coil that picks it up. But what we're doing is we have a separate system that extracts the frequencies. We work with those frequencies and then we don't tell the resonator what to do, we kind of encourage it to do certain things because we want to keep the acoustic properties intact. Amazing. Well, you have a, I believe, a working prototype. Yes, we do, up, yeah. So I'm hoping you can give us a quick demo. Of course. Fantastic, thanks so much. So here is the, um, uh, the prototype of the technology we were just talking about. It is, I mean, in this rendition, we have like one octave. So C2 to C3, 13 notes. Um, it's kind of in between monophonic and polyphonic. But uh, when we eventually put this into a product, uh, we can put like we can make it completely polyphonic. Um, so first, I'd like to show you what the acoustic system sounds like, and we have this acoustic mode here, and it sounds like. And in this mode, we're basically uh, we're hitting the resonator with that electromagnetic hammer, and we're just letting the sound die out. Right. So maybe you can hear the different modes in there and they all kind of die out together. So, but what we can do with this uh, feedback system is we can sustain uh, some of the modes and I can show you how we can sustain just the fundamental. So in that case, we're just hitting it and then listening to the lowest note that's happening and then just encouraging it to keep going with that indefinitely. As long as I have my finger on it, it'll just keep uh, ringing the fundamental and the overtones just die away naturally. Uh, what we can do on top of that is control all the fundament uh, all the overtones that are happening on top of that by bringing up this knob and... Also, what we can do is we can modulate uh, the amount of the overtones uh, with an LFO, which is So this is the basic workings of how acoustic synthesis works. We have an acoustic system and we can uh, independently work with different parts of the acoustic system as you would with a conventional synthesizer. Amazing. And the other thing to remember is actually these, these things, although it's not obvious to the eye, they're actually moving, right? So if I hit a note, uh, like the oh, no C, I can actually interfere with the acoustic system. I can put my finger on it. And so there's potential for things like, you know, something similar to like prepared piano. Um, and also if, if the gates are open and you, you, you physically interfere with the whole body of the instrument, it will, uh, make some sound, a bit like a spring reverb or something. And if you crank up the speaker and you bring it close, you'll get feedback like in a guitar. So we're trying to create something that isn't so um, kind of in a vacuum and just electronic. We're trying to, trying to create an instrument which is, you know, really alive and one that you can interact with physically. And this is the very, very kind of early stages of how it might work. Amazing. Do you have a, 
a sort of idea in mind of how the phys finished instrument might look or what sort of features it might have? Um, yeah, so, I mean, quick answer, no. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure everybody is like interested to, to kind of know if they can, you know, buy a product and what that product might be. Uh, we don't know just yet. We've got some ideas. So, um, but right now we're just trying to kind of feel, especially here, as it's, you know, it's the first reveal we're doing. Um, trying to kind of see like what's interesting about it. The physicality of it is obviously something that's very unique to this and we want to kind of make that happen in the final product as well. But to be honest, we don't even know if it's going to be a keyboard instrument, desktop module. Um, it could even be like a drum machine as well. So like can they like percussive sounds as well with it. We can inject noise into the driver. We can do all sorts of stuff with this. Um, we're also um, looking at uh, some effects applications as well. So if you imagine like a like a, a plate a plate reverb, and we excite it using a similar kind of method, um, and we we pick up the the resultant sound, but we can at the same time manipulate the acoustic properties of that plate. So we look we have some like kind of effects kind of potential there as well. Um, and also this doesn't have to be metal, right? So we're doing experiments as well with uh, columns of air, right? So we can. We have like a tube of air, we excite it at one end, and then we can have uh, pickups and a feedback system that will be able to work with the acoustic harmonics that naturally happen in this column of air. A bit like a wind instrument, but a synthesizer as well. So there's, you know, that's all kind of acoustic synthesis for us, and it's really like uh, the, the core kind of science behind what we believe will be, you know, our lineup coming out from Korg Berlin, or multiple lineups coming out from Korg Berlin. Amazing. Well, I've been to Superbooth many times and I don't think I've ever seen an entirely new form of synthesis before. So congratulations. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you can do with this and what sort of products you can deliver. And um, yeah, an absolute pleasure to meet you. Thanks so much. You too. Thank you.